I recently visited Morocco on a tour with a bunch of strangers. As this was my first time ever visiting Northern Africa, I really had no idea what to expect other than that the culture would be totally different than what I'm used to here in the United States. After traveling through the bustling city of Marrakesh and also through several small rural towns in the desert, the cultural differences became very clear. And many things that you wouldn't think twice about doing here in America America would not fly in Morocco. So if you're considering a trip to Morocco anytime soon, there are 10 things that you must know in order to have the best trip possible. So let's get into it. Number one, don't expect to find much alcohol. As Morocco is a Muslim country and alcohol is forbidden in the religion of Islam, the country has very strict laws around consuming alcohol. Typically, restaurants don't serve alcohol of any kind and most grocery stores don't sell it either. This means that if you wanna drink alcohol, you'll have to go to select grocery stores that do sell it or you'll have to find a bar that serves alcohol which depending on where you are in the country may be very hard to find. And even when you do come across a bar, there's a real possibility that they might not even be serving alcohol at the time that you go. For example, alcohol laws are much stricter during Ramadan when it is illegal to serve alcohol to Moroccans. Also, many businesses are closed on Friday, which is a day for religious and cultural practices, which makes it even harder to get a drink on this day of the week. If you're traveling to more rural areas, expect a more conservative religious culture, resulting in even fewer and possibly no opportunities to buy alcohol. Number two, dress very modestly. When traveling to Morocco, pack clothes that will cover most of your body. As you now know, Morocco is a Muslim country and this influences the way that people dress. Modesty can mean different things to different people in different cultures. And in this context, dressing modestly means at the very minimum covering your knees and shoulders. However, I would say that the vast majority of people in Morocco were fully covering their arms and legs if not more. Especially if you go to smaller towns and villages, which I highly recommend doing. I've already mentioned that they are much more conservative and this extends to the way that they dress and it is very common for you to see people who are fully covered head to toe and the only part of them that you can see is their eyes. So even if you are a non-Muslim visitor, I highly recommend covering your arms and legs for two main reasons. Firstly, to show respect to the people and the country and the culture that you're visiting. And second, for your own sakes, so that you don't feel uncomfortable being the only person showing any skin. This means packing clothes that are lightweight and breathable because even when you visit Morocco during the hottest months of the year, the modest clothing expectation is still the same. In my personal observations, the tourists that were not dressing modestly really stuck out in a not so positive light. And I wish that I had brought more long-sleeved tops and pants because I ended up having to wear the same things like every day, which was not ideal. By the way, if you're enjoying this video or if you've learned something new, please do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up and also hit that subscribe button. Number three, always make sure you have enough cash. To quote Dave Ramsey, cash is king. And I could sit here and talk to you about personal finances all day long, but regardless of whether you agree with Dave's personal finance philosophies or his politics, the cash is king sentiment is undeniably true in Morocco. The bus, taxis, restaurants, etc. primarily accept cash and oftentimes even require exact change. So you don't wanna get caught off guard without enough cash and make sure that you always have a range between large and small bills all the way down to small coins. I exchanged my money when I landed at the airport in Marrakesh, and that is because I needed cash immediately to take the bus from the airport to the city, but also because I had read in advance that a lot of the ATMs throughout the entire country are unreliable. Now, whether or not the exchange rate that I got at the airport was good or bad, I honestly have no idea. It was a choice that I made because again, I needed the money right then and there, and I also didn't wanna take any chances trying to find an ATM somewhere else in the city. In my experience, ATM lines in Morocco can be very long, and like I've already said, sometimes they're just out of cash and you don't wanna be in a situation where you are out of cash in a country that so heavily relies on it. Trust me, I made that mistake when I went to Bogota, Colombia, and it was 
easily the most stressful trip I've ever taken. By the way, the Moroccan currency is called the dirham, and today the exchange rate is about one US dollar equals 10 dirham. So it's a pretty easy conversion to do in your head. Number four, expect to hear the mosque call. Because practicing Muslims are supposed to pray five times a day, the local mosque or place of worship in each city and town and village will send out a loud mosque call, letting everyone know that it's time to pray. This call comes out over a very loud loudspeaker so that everybody can hear it. Again, there are five calls a day with the first one happening around 5 a.m. and the last one happening around 10 p.m. And the call or chant sounds like this. Hearing this chant was a very new and memorable experience for me, and I really admire the piety that it represents. The chant also woke me up once or twice during the trip, so if you are a light sleeper and you don't wanna be woken up at 5 a.m., I highly recommend bringing a pair of earplugs to help you sleep through that early morning call. Number five, trains are a great way to get between cities. I was very pleased to find that Morocco has a really reliable train system that can easily, cheaply, and safely get you from city to city. And when I say cheap, I mean my ticket from Marrakesh to Casablanca cost only about 150 dirham, which is about 15 US dollars. In comparison, a one-way flight from Marrakesh to Casablanca costs around 1,000 dirham or 100 US dollars. Getting a train ticket is really easy. You can show up to the station the same day as your train and just buy the ticket for the time that you want to leave. And when you do arrive for your train, you don't need to get there too far in advance. The trains were punctual and it was a pretty intuitive system. Compare that again to flying between cities, which is a major headache. According to my tour guide, you have to get to the airport about three hours in advance for domestic flights, and you have to print out your ticket because e-tickets are commonly not accepted. And on top of all of that, in my experience, the country's main airline, Royal Air Maroc, is not reliable. I had booked two flights with them that both got severely delayed and ultimately canceled and left me scrambling last minute to make other arrangements. So I never even got a chance to fly the airline, which is kind of crazy. Number six, nothing is free. Maybe that's just good life advice in general, but specifically in Morocco, don't expect to get anything for free. If someone offers to take your photo, they're going to ask for money or demand money afterward. If you get caught taking a picture or a video of someone's snake, like I did, they're going to ask for money or demand money afterward. If someone offers to help you find your destination, they're going to ask for money or demand money afterward. So if you don't want that to happen to you, don't engage with people that come up to you on the streets offering you things. And luckily, I never had any super aggressive people come up to me, but I have heard horror stories of that happening to other people, so it's best to just avoid that situation entirely. Number seven, tipping in Morocco is expected, though you aren't expected to give a full 20% as you are here in the United States. Instead, about 10% is typically what's expected. And of course, this applies to well beyond restaurants, but pretty much anyone who's in the service industry is going to expect a tip. Number eight, if you are spending any time in Marrakesh, I highly recommend that you check out the exciting rooftop culture. Marrakesh is known for boasting beautiful rooftops including for bars, restaurants, hotels, pools, etc. And since the weather can get pretty hot, rooftops are the perfect place to sit down, get a nice refreshing beverage, and just enjoy the views of the city. And they're a great place to admire the bustling, colorful, vibrant city life while staying removed from the chaos of it. Number nine, a lot of people speak English. The main languages spoken in Morocco are Arabic and Berber. And because I don't speak either of those languages, I was very nervous about the language barrier. However, during my trip, I was very pleasantly surprised to see how many people spoke English. If you're staying in major cities like Marrakesh or Casablanca, I wouldn't expect you to have any issues communicating with folks in English. 
I felt completely fine venturing off in the city by myself because I knew that people were gonna speak English and I could communicate just fine. In more rural areas, of course, English is going to be less common, but even still in the hotels where we stayed and the restaurants where we dined, people spoke English. So it was really, really convenient for someone like me who doesn't speak Arabic or Berber. And lastly, number 10, avoid the tap water. If you're well-traveled, you probably already expected this advice, but most of the tap water in Morocco is not potable. It's not meant for you to drink straight from the tap. So you'll need to buy plenty of bottled water so you don't get sick. You can buy small and large bottles of water at grocery stores, of course, but also at restaurants where you're dining. And I even went as far as brushing my teeth with bottled water just because I didn't want to take any chances. Though I will say, I did forget to use bottled water sometimes when brushing my teeth and I never got sick. So again, it's really up to what you're comfortable with. Ultimately, my trip to Morocco really opened my eyes to both a culture and a religion that I knew very little about. It was a really fun and educational trip that helped me dismantle some of the stereotypes that I've seen propagated in the media. So it left me feeling really refreshed and excited to visit other Northern African countries like Algeria and Tunisia, hopefully in the very near future. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and found something useful. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and leave a comment letting me know what piece of information you found the most interesting. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for more exploration inspiration and travel tips, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.